In 2010, pure stock driver Kyle Shannon won championships at both Hummingbird Speedway and Thunder Mountain Speedway. Those were his second titles at each track. Since he started racing in 2004, he has garnered 29 checkered flags. For 2011, he is moving up to the street stock ranks. Although he is accustomed to being a front runner, he has no visions of grandeur to start the season. First year out, I'm hoping for maybe just a couple wins here and there, a couple good top fives so I can just get to learn the car and then see how we're, if we're still in this division next year, then next year I'll give it 110% and keep going at it. Kyle hopes that success in the street stock may lead to a ride in a late model, but to get to that point, he realizes that his past accomplishments won't guarantee wins. In a way, I've kind of figured that out already. It's like, yeah, it might be good in, in pure stock, but I'm new to the street stock division. I got to run with guys like Alan Dillinger, Rusty Martz, uh, Eric Bond, and all those guys who are repeatedly good every every week, every week and out. And that's just what I want to. That's what I hope to be this year. Is not not predominantly up front week one, week two, but gradually get up front. So it's like, hey, he was good in pure stock, and now he's showing himself he's really good in street stock too. Kyle has turned some laps in a street stock before and it was enough to build his confidence when given a chance to compete on a regular basis. A couple years ago, I had the chance to drive uh, Tommy Scott's street stock over at Clearfield for practice. And it took, it took a couple practice sessions to get used to his car compared to what I was running. And by the time I got used to the car, the way it was handling, the way it was reacting to what I was wanting it to do, I was turning some of the, some of the faster laps in the street stocks and just my first time in it. He plans to rely on that same team when needed to help him through his rookie season. They've been doing it for quite some time, and I know Dom Sir isn't running this year. It's now Colton Gearhart. Uh, I'll probably go talk to Dom and get his input if he's going to be at the track, or I'll call him and ask him. It's like, hey, my car's doing this. What's something I should look for suspension-wise, driveline-wise that may be causing this problem? How can I fix it? Or even if, if he wouldn't like to put him in the car and let him do it for a night and say and get his input and say all right I thought it was doing this but it's doing something completely different. And as if driving in a new division isn't enough of a challenge he will do so with a brand new car. My friend Ben Smith has been the one who's been helping me put this new car together for us and uh, he he worked for Kenny McLaughlin over a winter and the deal was Ben wanted a car out of the deal and so Kenny bent the bars and Ben did all the welding. He did all the work on it himself. And then two years ago, Ben was putting his car together to run in the pure stock division, but never got around to finishing it. So we were looking for a street stock at the time and that car was available, it was brand new. It's never seen the track. It's never been wrecked, never been clipped, never anything. It's still, still freshly off the assembly line, if you want to say. And uh, he knows that car better than I do just as I know my old car better than he does. Kyle believes his RPM racing engine's power plant is strong enough. However, he has a backup plan if he can't get his new car to handle properly. Yeah, this new car, it's, a, uh, it's experimental. Like, I had to put the shock mounts up front on my own. So I don't know what the front geometry is on this car. I don't know if it's going to work the way I'm hoping it will. If it doesn't, then I'll just have to park it or send it out and have the front stuff, all the front suspension work done to it. And then I'll just pull my old pure stock out. And since I know that car handles, I know what it does. I know exactly what, what I want it to do. And it'll do everything I expect it to do. His Monte Carlo pure stock has been a workhorse and a winner. The battle scars reveal a history of abuse. Yet Kyle has faith in his old mount. It's been on a wild ride a few times. and. I got to go over it this winter here and or early this spring here before I put a new body on it and just nut and bolt the whole car. I got to I got to weld patch panels in and I got to fix roll bars that are cracked off the frame and but the car works, it handles perfect and I can't get rid of it. I don't want to get rid of it. Besides a change in divisions, this champion will be without his familiar red and white scheme. The black and the green came about as out of, out of cost effectiveness. The green was already on the frame. I didn't want to send it out and have it re-sandblasted and powder coated because of time constraints and money. So I sat down and was just thinking, well, what colors are going to go good with lime green? And I came down with black and 
and it exceeded my expectations when it was all said and done. When I got it back from Floyd Klein's and Dave Klein when he was doing the body, I dragged, when I took it down to him, it was just a bare, bare cage frame and a little bit of decking. And when I brought it back, it was an entire car, something I could not have done in two weeks. So my hat's off to them, a great thanks to them. And uh, then Animal came and lettered it, and it's just, the whole car just came alive after he lettered it, and it just looks amazing. Also new for this season is the comfort of having more room to work on his race cars. This is just night and day from what I was working in, in uh, all of 2008 and 2009. I had a 24 by 24 foot garage attached to my house and uh, that's what I worked out of for two years, pulling motors, transmissions, hung my own bodies in it and did all the work on it myself out of this little tiny garage and this was finished I think late July this year and we moved in here and it was just there's more there's so much more room it's just so much and it's so much nicer to work in able to move around some of his former pure stock competitors may be glad they are no longer racing against the 1s but after years in the division he has developed some great friendships i've had I've made a lot of good friends in this division and i will i'll help them every way i can and give them advice on what they're what i'm seeing what their cars are doing maybe what they can do to change them We'll see what happens. Like I said, we'll see what happens this year. I know a couple of my good friends actually just live over the hill from here and their shops over the hill. And I go over there quite often and give them a hand. His plan is to compete each week at Thunder Mountain. He may run the Monte Carlo at Hummingbird at times. After the regular season, he hopes to venture out to other tracks. Yeah, we're going to wait and see uh, after Thunder Mountain season's over. They, they, might, they might put a few shows together at the end of the year. We're not sure. Uh, but I do want to go down and try PPMS, go down and try Lernerville, go up to Tri-City, maybe go out to Port Royal if, our, if their rules allow us, maybe Heston, just go around and see how well I am against guys that are good elsewhere. Maybe we will catch up with Kyle this season to see how he is progressing. I wouldn't be surprised if I interview him after a victory. While well, this coming week offers some great races to choose from, we will preview them after this. Family fun starts at Jake's Carts. Choose a cart from their showroom or have one custom built to your specifications. Custom paint, lift kits, wheels, tires, and rear seats are just a few options. Go ahead, shake it up. Whether you are camping or trail riding on any terrain, Jake's Carts has the perfect cart your whole family will enjoy. Stop in today for a test drive. Financing available for qualified buyers. Jake's Carts, Route 522 McVeigh Town, online at jakescarts.com. 